Hey, what's going on friends, family? My name's Skylands, and I wanted to talk about my top 10 best dueling games. So let's go ahead and just try to self-define this genre real quick. Uh, basically, these aren't exactly fighters. If you squint, you could maybe see that, but no, not really. They're not even games that even quite prioritize 1v1ing, but we are talking about the 1v1 experience. Really, the specialty comes from, yeah, you're fighting one other person, but the game wasn't quite designed around just that. So you have a lot of nuance with fighting, that kind of comes from the disbalance and the chaos that's colored from the PvE elements or the fact that it was designed as an MMO or because that it's actually a team game and then you're jumping in and you're just fighting the 1v1. So there's a lot of room in the arenas or there's a lot of different abilities or it's just radically designed compared to what you're used to in general 1v1 fighting games. And these games tend to be niche, but hopefully I put together this list so you can really see the potential, the possibilities, the up and comers uh, here for this genre and hopefully you find a new game to try out yourself and look forward to this genre and I just wanted to talk about something that I am very much a fan of that has gone under the radar for too long. So here we are, here's the spotlight, my top 10 dueling games. All right, guys, so starting out the list uh, at the bottom, despite it being the game that I think has the greatest potential for being the greatest dueling game in a long time is going to be Warframe. I like starting off my list by kind of breaking rules. This is melee focus. That's true. But Warframe has a lot of guns. However, it moves so quickly with such agility and has such an emphasis actually on kind of close quarters combat, at least in the maps and the game mode so far, and abilities, which are generally close quarters, uh, you know, and very explosive when you get up close, then yeah, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that for the most part, this, this kind of fits as a dueling game, especially with such inspiration from dueling games like Quake, even though that's not melee and fighting exactly, it still feels like a pretty good duel. Don't worry, that's not on the list, but Warframe obviously makes it because it's ninjas in space. Also, this is the only game that really gives me that feeling of Guns the Duel, which was some of the greatest mixed combat, uh, which is melee and also ranged gameplay that I've ever seen. You know, the different combos of shotgunning. You you know, you, you knock somebody up in the air, they're stunned, and you shoot them before they even hit the ground or whatever. It's such an amazing experience. Um, Warframe could have that potential, could be as good as that, but they always keep it on the back burner. Still, I've always been a fan of this. I've actually always wanted PvP in Warframe, even before it was even a thing. They said they never wanted PvP. Well, I wanted it, and they put it in because people kept wanting it, and it's it's always been on the back burner. They've always steadily, <laughs> kind of, slowly, very little by little updated it, and I think one day it'll be competent. So right now it's at number 10, mainly because it, it does have guns. You know, it's not quite exactly the, the ideal uh, image that I have for this list, and also it, it could be great, but it's not quite there. Everyone knows Warframe is obviously much more. It's, it's a looter grinder. Also, the balance is way off the charts compared to everything else on this list. But it could be so, so good. And when, when you get a really good, you know, like match, which is once in a blue moon, uh, it's something that you'll never forget. So, yeah, I'm going to include it on the list and uh, bump the thumb if you guys ever played Guns of Duel. Next up, we have a game that is only so low because it's not technically released yet, but it will be soon and you can play for free in the betas that they have going on. Anyways, Hunter's Arena. Uh, so yeah, sign up for betas, check it out. Guys, if you guys have already played it, let me know what you thought in the comments below, but I do have a video on it. Anyways, you're seeing the gameplay, and I'm about to just give you a review. Anyways, Hunter's Arena is actually a battle royale, uh, but they do include arena game modes. So if you just want to play 1v1s or 2v2s, then you can do that. And interestingly enough, when you play the 1v1, it actually kind of uses a tag system. So you can switch between characters when you want. Uh, there's a little bit of limitations on it, but for the most part, yeah, you switch between different characters, and you can even chain combos between them. And I really, really like that because I. I don't think in any other game you really have that if it's just you yourself uh, actually playing the character. So this game definitely takes a lot of inspiration from Wuxia Fighters, which is super rare, but upcoming. We're, we're seeing some new games on the horizon. Hunter's Arena is one of them. It's just one that I was able to play, so I can tell you now. Uh, but I, I think that overall, as a battle royale, this is probably like one of the most graphically impressive. Oh, as a battle royale as well, uh, this emergent genre of fantasy and magic and, and Wuxia battle royale. Now, this, this is probably going to be the one, you know, this is going to be a banger. But as a 1v1 dueling game, it was also really competent. Uh, definitely, in the alpha, I had some performance issues, like the game looks way too gorgeous, right? The animations and everything. But this game isn't too complex, 
actually, compared to something like Black Desert uh, or some others, you know, like MMO inspired games. No, this game's actually really straightforward, and I think uh, it's really more comparable to kind of like a, a fantasy for honor, actually. So if you like for honor, I think Hunter's Arena um, obviously got that Asian Kung Fu fighting into it. But ah, this is this is pretty wild. It's pretty good. Okay, next up is a really strange game. Uh, you're definitely gonna need a beefy PC to play this one, but it's Conqueror's Blade. I just recently did kind of a, a very light video talking about the introductory experience, uh, but this is actually a big team battle sieging style game. So think For Honor, kind of mixed with like a Mordhau sort of thing, or really more like Kingdom Under Fire because it's actually a strategy game. So I will say this, that some of the mechanics are really more based on wide sweeping attacks because it's supposed to be warriors uh, styled like you're supposed to kill like lots of enemies, uh, you know AOE kind of attacks things like that, but uh, even though you can normally play the game with like a little army or legion and you kind of command it around like a strategy game uh, And it's normally like 16 versus 16 and there's even some MMO elements Conqueror's Blade is still a competent 1v1 dueling game Especially because you can duel in the towns if I'm not mistaken There's uh, different arena game modes and the game is still developing So we'll see how they sport it or what new game modes they add But even in just like the general big team battle situations the maps are so large uh, You know there's different areas that you need to conquer quest uh, in Conqueror's Blade that you will often encounter 1v1s. Even though you are 1v1ing also with an army that you are controlling, there are legitimate tactics, mechanics that are very action based. You know, like if they're charging you on horses, you have to actually command your spears to hold your ground. And then as soon as they knock down the horses, you tell them to attack. And it feels more action packed than it looks actually. It's not, it's not just you standing back controlling units and then running in, you know, Wuxia warrior style and just going ham. There are definitely some mechanics in the 1v1 and the fights that I've had in this game, even against bots, were pretty engaging, I would say. So it can be laggy, it can be very sticky compared to For Honor, but I kind of like the MMO elements uh, with the, the combat, you know, like the invisibility and the way the combos work and the way you actually press buttons. It's very simplistic, very easy to get into, but when you're actually fighting, then there's a tremendous amount of complexity with the dodging and when you use different things, the cooldowns, things like that. Really appreciate that you normally don't have cooldowns in fighters. So uh, Conqueror's Blade, Loses some points overall for, I think, performance. But of course, you know, the, the myriad of different gameplay styles that you can play in this game is really different. And it's also free to play. So, no excuse not to try. And actually, if you're still conflicted, I do have videos of this game and pretty much every game on this list. I'll link them in the comments below or somewhere. All right, we are actually moving really slowly because I am so fanatical about these games, but let's talk about Blade Symphony. Blade Symphony is a game that is probably the most close to being a fighting game, I think, uh, in terms of like how it was originally envisioned in a way, is that, okay, they, they wanted to make a 3D fighter that was 2v2 and 3v3, like, you know, an arena fighter, or I don't know if we were gonna define this genre as brawlers or whatnot, but this is a game that I always wanted to promote. Now, this game is sitting at mixed reviews since it went free to play tragically so I don't exactly know what's going on with that but when I played this back in the day when it was buy to play uh, I just found it very difficult so basically Blade Symphony if I had to describe it is it's a sword fighting 3d game but uh, it's like kind of more fencing it's more fencing it's more fancy and it's really more twirly whirly <laughs> look this game just has a totally different control scheme that I cannot relate to any other game I think and if you can think of one please let me know in the comments below but this is a title that looks like one way one thing and when you actually get in it's totally ridiculous uh, you know I like how Yoshimitsu is like totally different of a character compared to the rest of the cast in Tekken it's like that like if every character was just as weird and radically different as Yoshimitsu. Uh, actually, I would not doubt if Yoshimitsu was a direct inspiration for Blade Symphony. I believe there's actually some very identical attacks here. Anyways, sword fighting, kind of fencing, katana-ish, twirly-whirly fighting, fighting game that is normally, you know, the control scheme and everything is designed around being able to play as a 3v3 or 2v2 fighter, but 1v1 dueling, it's... Well, it's, it's something. It's something. It definitely double-edged sword, uh, goods and bads, just like the rest of this list. But I think I really want you guys to try it just because it's so weird. And next up, we have a game that you probably knew would be on the list here uh, if you follow this sort of scene at all, and that's a game called Absolver. Definitely, if you're somebody who loves dueling in Dark Souls, Absolver is like 
that that the game um so even though i said that this list isn't exactly just focused on 1v1 absolver is kind of unique the systems and mechanics they put in place is kind of inspired by literally 1v1ing in dark souls i believe uh it's a martial arts inspired z locking 3d fighter that has this open world that you kind of walk around fight bots uh, in martial arts fights sometimes it's like 1v2 or something like that but then there's like people that you can find out in the open world there is PvP, it's kind of invasion-y, uh, and then you can also just do duels. So the dueling in Absolver does feel somewhat natural, I would say, if you compare it to other fighting games. It's kind of low fantasy. I'm normally of a kung fu fighting, you know, kicking kind of person. Uh, lots of big effects, magics, things like that, but Absolver's down to earth. And you also customize your move set, which can be kind of confusing, but it's something that a lot of people really like about Absolver. It's something that requires a lot of patience and timing. It's not just button spammy, and it's definitely not the spectacle of something like Smash or Soul Calibur or Mortal Kombat. Yeah, more down to earth, for a kind of uh, esoteric style, like magic-y uh, fighting game. Like, 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 it is low fantasy. Like, there are some fantasy-ish elements to it. Uh, one thing that I, I do want to detract from this game, though, is that uh, compared to Dark Souls, its PvE is basically just a tutorial in a warm-up and it's really much of a tease. But, you know, it's dueling where the heart is. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty good. A, lot of, a little scene has been cultivated from it, and it, it is a game that is unlike any other. And halfway on the list, we have Battle Rite, a game that you probably just now remembered existed and did it not exist. Yeah, th this game was actually really hype. It was big for about a month. It was big when it launched, and a lot of people were really excited for this upcoming brawler, weird MOBA fighter thing, uh, which goes up to 3v3, actually. Three totally different characters fighting three totally different characters, uh, just duking it out. The combinations that can go down is, is fun. It's very fun. But the 1v1 also is so challenging. It is so engrossing. Uh, my personal favorite character was Thorn. I liked him a lot. And there's some cool combos that you can utilize. But overall, Battle Rite, I will say the, the flow of the, of the match Matches is very much based around big cooldowns. So you're gonna do big attack cooldowns, and you're not really just gonna blow your load on one, you know, like some huge string of combo. It's much more slower paced, kind of like Absolver, where it's kind of like uh, act, react, almost kind of turn based ish. And then there's some strange arena shootery inspirations with, uh, you know, the, the map actually closes in, there's health pickups and like a power pickup. So there is a resource for ultimates, uh, which you actually have to pick up and you earn from attacking and getting hit. So there is some sort sort of mobility element to the game, which sort of disbalances it, but it also makes it fun. Overall, I do appreciate the, the vast array of characters that are in here from stealth, leaping frogs, and then you have like shielders and supports because it is designed as a 3v3 game, but still even as a 1v1 supports can hold their own and it can get pretty ham. Yeah, so a support versus a tank or a tank versus DPS, it, that sort of thing you just never see in fighting games. So I really appreciate it about that. But the game, as competitive as it could have been, it just wasn't promoted as that. And uh, at the same time, it wasn't really that fun just casually like you see in Smash or Brawlhalla. So it's not in the spotlight anymore, but it's still a game that is gorgeous, polished, and has some of the most engrossing fighting 1v1 gameplay that I have ever had personally. Next, we have the winner, actually, uh, number four here. This was the number one for Dueling MMO. Yeah, uh, Dueling an MMO is fun because you have this whole kind of living experience. Let's say it's a game you log in every day and you have a guild and you got stuff to do, right? So in Bleed and Soul, the end game is fun. It's actually very challenging. It's a pretty action-packed game where you're, you're actually tackling on the, these huge bosses, these big monsters, and there is a story, which is pretty cute. There's cutscenes, uh, the gorgeous art. Uh, there's a lot to this game but the 1v1 in Korea is technically an eSport. And there's also Tag Team, so you can do 2v2, which I played a lot of as well. And the different classes, uh, again, like a lot of these uh, fantasy style games like Battle Rights, play totally different. The Summoner versus the, the Stealth class versus the Big Axe Boy. I personally play the Berserker. I had a lot of fun with this. And for the MMO dueling scene, I think Blade and Soul is objectively the number one because it's 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 the eSport 1v1 MMO. Though some people would say RuneScape, actually. But in terms of this list, uh, for games that are inspired by fighting games but not fighting games, Blade and Soul is going to come out on top. Also, do know that they're updating the engine, so if you think the game looks a little laggy or maybe it's a little dated by now, which when we got it in the East, it was uh, like, it was epic, and then in the West, it took six years. 
took six years to come from east to west. So yeah, it was old when we got it, but now here, globally, getting a new engine, new update, new push for Blade and Soul. They started promoting it again. New classes, new updates, and I think that this game could could jump up this list pretty pretty freaking quick here. Uh, so yeah, if you want to get a game to grind out and is incredibly complex with cooldowns, a huge number of abilities, combos, uh, fun 3D map mechanics, I, it, it's it's. <laughs> It's ridiculous. It really should be number one. Some things holding it back, obviously. With that engine update, though, might change everything. Okay, number three. I'm gonna slap down Mordow. Mordow was such a trolly fun game, and it, it is not exactly a 1v1 game. Uh, even though if you watch the initial trailer, it obviously is designed with the, in mind that there would be a number of 1v1 encounters. Similar to Conqueror's Blade, it is actually a big team battle sieging style game, but this one lacks the RTS mechanics or the MMO inspiration. This one's directly inspired by chivalry, and it really plays more like a first person shooter. But they knew that there would be a wide variety of combat uh, styles and encounters counters from sieging uh, walls, enclosures, uh, open fields, things like that. So there are going to be bows and you're going to be throwing weapons or you're going to be playing instruments. That's a thing. Um, or, you know, a horseback, things like that. Uh, so the first person mechanics can be very, I think, daunting for a new player. You actually swing and do certain attacks based on the movement of your mouse as you're moving your screen, which uh, it can be very disorienting, but then again, that is what people really loved about Chivalry. No other game is like this other than Chivalry, so this is a direct spiritual successor, and I think that the 1v1s are also, the scene is gonna be maybe a little bit bigger than it was previously. One thing I love about dueling games is that there's always like these private sort of communities that focus just on that, and now with the, the servers and, and the kind of the, the modding scene that I've, I've kind of been looking into, I think some people are doing some weird add-ons to this game. I think there could be some cool shit going on with Mordhau uh, when it comes to just 1v1s. But as a casual, fun melee game, yeah, Mordhau's cool. Uh, medieval games are pretty rare. This one does it right. But in the 1v1 section, it's not perfect. Definitely so. Um, it's not as ridiculous as I would want it. But there is a good variety of all the different weapons. And for the most part, it is somewhat realistic. If you want a realistic-ish, uh, you know, sword fighting, axe throwing kind of game, uh, that's Mordhau. You know, End them rightly, my dudes. Number two. I've got Dark Souls. You could also put Bloodborne in here, though the PvP scene for Bloodborne is really diminished, and I don't think there's that large a variety of the different builds. Uh, but in the end, I love the mechanics of Bloodborne as well, but Dark Souls is the one that has the invasions uh, proper that uh, really, oh my god, just blew everyone's goddamn minds. Uh, and as well, this game has fight clubs. Uh, th th there's a lot of titles, like I already said, th there's like these niche communities that have like, you know, the 1v1 community for Absolver or Battle Rite or whatever, and people talk about that, uh, sure, uh, that's fine, but Dark Souls is one that's like uniquely special, like the PvP scene in Dark Souls is an entire fandom in itself, not just some small community, it's crazy. So joining a fight club in Dark Souls is stupid fun, uh, the PvP scene, the, the etiquette that goes into it, all the different builds, and if you play Dark Souls 3, there actually is a 1v1 arena that you can jump into, 2v2, 3v3, but Dark Souls is entirely unbalanced, and it has all these abilities that do all these wicked things, and you have complete RPG control of the paper doll, of your stats, of the different spells and in weapons that you're going to be utilizing, and there's such complexity from the hitboxes of everything to the subtle effects to the resources that they use, and then where you actually fight, all the different areas, totally radically different. It's not just a flat little arena, there's all these strange obstructions or even PvE elements that can get in the way of your duel. Uh, Dark Souls is fantastic, and I would love to put it at number one. But similar to an, uh, quite a few of these games, the net code or the performance overall really hurts the game. Also, uh, now that we have so many Dark Souls games, uh, the player base is fragmented a little bit, though every year uh, we actually do have a return to Lord Ran event or a return to whatever game uh, you're playing. So that's cool. It's always alive. Dark Souls will never die, hopefully. Um, and I think that this game, this style of gameplay, uh, really should be taken more seriously by From Software. They've always actually taken shortcuts when it comes to their online. They've never supported their games, even Armored Core, which is a 1v1, basically PvP game, uh, competitively. So please, I would, I would, I would love it's Dark Souls Evo. Let's go. It'll never happen. But I'm just saying, 
oh my god, the, 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 the mix of melee and magic in Dark Souls, and the mechanics and the way you control your character, uh, and the sincerity, again, of the, the combat, the, the, the hitbox, that hitbox porn, baby, is so good. Uh, but I will say, the netcode, the lag, uh, being able to just dodge infinitely, never get hit, and then just randomly get a crit backstab, it can get really, really cheesy and overboard, but at the same time, those little subtle elements of the, the cheese from the RPG mechanics, and you know, all the disbalance of just the, the core game design is stupid fun. So if they could just take the online seriously, it, you know, even the co-op is like, mm, pretty fucking laggy. Warframe, looking at you too. God damn. Anyways, get that netcode right, boys. But then again, even competitive fighting games, Street Fighter has some issues with that. So that's my only complaint. That's why it's only number two. And now, number one, which is super debatable, even after glowing on Dark Souls, I'm gonna put for Honor, because this was the first AAA attempt to create a game uh, kind of in this vision. Uh, I know we have Mordow, which is very well done. Before Honor, Ubisoft, okay, it's got a story mode. It's a team versus team fighting, and it goes from like 5v5 or whatever to 4v3, 3v3, 2v2, and 1v1. Also, you're gonna constantly go through 1v1s whenever you are playing the team modes, uh, the different objectives, and how this game controls is very innovative, which, I mean, mo most of these games are. I mean, that's why I'm making this list in the first place, but I do love the directional style combat that I actually, it's somewhat similar to Mordhau, but in a third person kind of mode. The characters also have a little bit of a low fantasy element to them, similar to Absolver. It's actually a little bit more comical. Things are a little bit more exaggerated. Characters are a little bit more unique. All the different kits can be very fun to clash against. Uh, so I don't know how you guys feel about the balance of War Honor right now, but it's probably in a better state than it's ever been. And this game's kind of being slept on a little bit. It's not unpopular by any means, actually. And there is a consistent fan base and this game they don't have the tournaments that they used to i don't know if they're going to come back to that because they've been supporting rainbow six siege amazingly but we'll see what happens with war honor but they are still updating the game we got new classes new characters and overall i just really appreciated how serious they were about a, a genre that kind of didn't exist uh, and, and was really unloved. You know, these games that are inspired by MMO Battlegrounds, these games that are inspired by like medieval combat, and you, you just want to get in into the fray, you want to kind of, you want to fight, but you want to fight in the fray. You, you want more, you want it bigger, better. It's not just a stage, it's a world kind of, you know, I'm, what I'm saying is like, For Honor is just a little bit bigger than what you would see in a lot of fighting games like Tekken or Dead or Alive. Obviously, Obviously, it's going to miss a ton of nuance in some of the combos and the gameplay uh, when it comes to a game like Tekken, but in a grander macro scale, uh, there's a lot of uniquity with the For Honor as well. If you play with the map mechanics and the overall gameplay loop of um, jumping into a game, you know, pushing someone off the ledge, new round, next round, things can happen so quickly. And at the same time, if you play really good players, the turtling, the parrying, it, you know, that could also be a little bit too much at the same time. I'm sorry. Um, but For Honor, for all the weirdness and awkwardness that it has, this was like the first AAA attempt to make something like a 3D fighter, but then branch it out into a bigger genre. Uh, which I don't know what you'd call it, brawler or something, whatever, but it's gonna be my number one for dueling game. Alright friends and family, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoy the longer winded video so I can actually really give you proper reviews, my true enthusiasm and energy, and not just talking really fast, and uh, you know, overall, I think we have a good time here, right? Anyways, I, I really want you guys to play some of these games, check it out. Even if it, generally it's not a game that you would explore, I, I want you to have that experience, because it's it's new, it, it's gonna be memories that you make, and maybe you're gonna grow as a player, or at least add to your palette of a gamer, and you can go with a, you know, maybe a new appreciation for some other different games. Like, you play For Honor, even if you don't like it, think you can understand some of the mechanics and you kind of get into it, and then maybe you'll go and jump into Tekken, or especially a game like Soul Calibur. That's totally cool too, or maybe you'll just get hyped and look forward to all these new crazy dueling and, and brawling style games that are coming up pretty soon, so yeah. Um, there's a game that I kind of wanted to mention real quick, there's a lot of spectacle fighters, uh, and there's one that looks really cool, which was a Black Clover Quartet Knights. Totally wrote it off, um, even though this is a genre I love, but I'm looking forward to more games like that, where it's like a 3D, you're actually running around a true space, not just rotating around an enemy or on a stage or whatever, and you're dueling and fighting with more of a macro sense, like multiple larger varieties of skills 
that do wildly different things. I think that's kind of exciting, and that's also why I'm really enjoying Smash Bros, which pro debatably could be on this list because that was a party game that turned into a fighting game. But yeah, anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. But if you loved the video, sub and bump the thumb. Thanks so much, guys. Keep the hype alive, and I'll see you again next time.